Again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit here. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you have joined us, Ashley Strummy and Steve Post. And Ashley, you were last weekend in the promised land of sprint car racing. And what a wild one that National Open was from beginning to end on Friday and Saturday. Honestly, I know we talk about the National Open and it being prestigious and this year being the largest paying race of the year, but that place was absolutely electric, even though it was 40 degrees. (laughs) (laughs) The racing was good. The surface was phenomenal Saturday night um, and they had a record crowd. No kidding. Wow. Exciting stuff. That's for sure. In the you can't keep a good man down theme. (laughs) Uh, Donnie Schatz has been down, only four wins prior to this, but the biggest one on the biggest stage with the biggest check, and Donnie Schatz put it in victory lane, and I'm assuming you were with CBS Sports with the, with the World Racing Group. You probably had a chance to talk to happy Donnie Schatz, I'm assuming. Yes, um, we had talked <laughs> earlier in the weekend, obviously, and he had mentioned that this is not his favorite season by any yes. means, but uh, <laughs> winning that race on Saturday night definitely made up for it, and we chatted more about his career than yeah. anything. 299 wins, yeah. just with the World of Outlaws. Absolutely incredible, and it's astonishing to me how – he has built that in such a short amount of time, I guess. He's 300. not an old guy. He's not. No, it's incredible. He, it's funny. We, we, I watch these things, and I'm like, man, old man shots his role. I'm like, well, he's not an old guy. But when you compare him to the kids that we have out there, yes, he's yes. older than them. <laughs> and you're right. He's a young, young racer with a lot of career left in front of him. And 299 while we're recording this. Shoot, if you're watching this on right. TV on Saturday morning, he might have 300 by the time you watch this. So, fun, But fun, one fun. thing yes. I want to say yes. really quick that he made – he acknowledgement to is he said half the people in these pits worked for me at some point in wow. time and he said this is the reason I'm here so that was nice. pretty cool for him to acknowledge that great great stuff that is for sure speaking of great stuff the world final or the uh, yeah the national open was at Williams Grove and the short track nationals were over at I-30 Raceway here is the call Tony Bakoven and Ben Shelton it was Roger Crockett and Sam Haferteep Jr. mixing it up this is what it looked like on Flow Race and now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. Here they come down the front, shoot nose to tail. They go to the inside, two lap cars ahead of your leaders, side by side for the lead. And Haferteep can't quite make it happen. Now he'll pull even. He edges ahead of Crockett off into three and four. Who's going to lead at the halfway mark? 15 down. Who is your leader at the line? Give it to Haferteep Jr. You've got a new leader. That death-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death, the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Pride. Passion. Performance. We are. We are. We are Team Dryde. Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit rolling along. We're in the Hercules Tire Studios in Concord, North Carolina. And let's go to the Hercules Tire Hotline where, well, I'll tell you what, one of the young hot shoes from Western Pennsylvania joins us. AJ Flick is on the line. Hello, AJ. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Uh, Mr. Post, Ms. Stremmy, thank you guys very much for having me on. It's fun, uh, but you can't start uh, calling me young anymore. I'm getting up in age now. Well, you're getting up in age. <laughs> what is your what how old? Is that okay, how old are you? Yeah, I'm 27. We oh, oh racing bless when your I was heart. 21. But yeah, look at these guys now. There's even people coming out 16, 17 years old, lighting up the world. That's funny. We were just talking about it in our open about how I think Donnie Schatz, when you compare him to everybody else, is old, but yet Donnie Schatz is still very young, actually. Yes. So, um, so you got a little ways till forty-two. Ways to I think Donnie's forty-two now. 43. Yeah. Oh, you got plenty of time. <laughs> plenty of plenty of plenty of runway ahead of you. That's, That's right. what they say. I yeah. wish I could have uh, Donnie's experience with Geo Selzy's age. That'd be the perfect combination. Ooh, whoa. That's a pretty spectacular uh, analogy there. But I think anybody <laughs> would be willing to have that. <laughs> Wow, I love that assessment. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chew on that a little bit, man. I'll tell you what, that is, that is awesome. 
AJ, you know, we have we have chatted with you over the years, but I, but I really want to go back and visit this because I don't know that we've told this story in quite some time, and we have got so many new viewers on this show. Your background, your history in racing is absolutely amazing. Your grandfather, Willard Pee Wee, was the 1973 late model champ, okay? Your dad, Mark, was the 1994 modified champ, all this at Lernerville, and you are a uh, multi-time sprint car champ. How, the family background and carrying on that family tradition, why is that so important to you? I mean, I still work out of the same garage that my grandfather built for his cool trucks back in the day. I mean, we don't have any heat in it besides a fireplace, so it can get pretty tough to work out of, especially on hot, humid days and in the wintertime and stuff. So um, just a lot of history down there. Um, The way my grandfather started racing with a bunch of his friends, got my father involved in it, myself involved in it, and then each one of us ended up winning uh, the Lernerville title, first family in Lernerville history to win uh, all three Premier Division titles. And ironically enough, we all did 21 years apart, so that was pretty cool. Uh, the worst part about it, unfortunately, is my grandfather passed away when I was six months old. So mm. I never really got to see him drive. Um, we watched a bunch of old videos, and my uncle has helped me track some of that stuff down. But uh, when it comes down to it, it also is kind of funny because I drive more like my grandfather than I do my own father. So I must have watched my father enough times that I realized what not to do. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> well, speaking of watching your father race, being that he was modified, what made you kind of go the sprint car route then? Because obviously big blocks are still surprisingly out there in the Lernerville area, even though they're a Northeast mod. Yeah, I mean, back when we were making this decision, the Northeast modifieds were virtually dead in our area. I mean, we were getting... 10 to 15 a night, you know, and the big races, there really aren't any. Um, I don't think the BRP tour is a feasible idea for the amount of money you run in the distance you travel, plus the fact that we also have to work. So I took all that into account. As much as I love the modified, I just didn't think it was the right option for us at that time. I kind of wanted to shoot for late model racing. I mean, with uh, what we have in this area, a ton of big races, World of Outlaws up here, Lucas Oil was up here. Um, ULMS series, a bunch of non-sanctioned races. There's plenty of opportunity for money. But then we started looking into it and what the costs are and late models, quite frankly, to be competitive are just outrageous. Um, and we don't think the crates are a very strong route to go, especially for what you spent, not including uh, the dropping purse increases. So um, what we ended up doing, honestly, is simply compromising. Um, we ended up going a sprint car route so that we could keep the uh, open fenders, open wheels, and honestly just tried to learn from there we talked to a bunch of people on whether we needed to go to a 305 route or uh the 410 route and they basically just told us if you want to try and make a couple bucks and stick out this uh go to the 410 be smart just don't tear up any equipment and you'll make more money in the long run and it ended up paying off your journey has been amazing because while you've won the championships at uh at lernerville which is a friday night track great track in western pennsylvania you have aggressively pursued some racing in central pennsylvania we've seen you you've you finished the top five at points at port royal how important for that has that learning and has that process been for you to move over and get to race in central pennsylvania as well oh it's it's tremendous i mean you guys know because you've been around the sport but the the typical fan they'll come out and they might see we have success one night and, you know, they might become a fan or say, hey, he's a good driver, stuff like that. But when you look at the big picture, I mean, we started going to Port Royal in like 2017. That would have been my third or fourth year in racing. And, I mean, we just struggled. We couldn't get past 13th place. The first time I ever went out there, um, I think Greg Hahn had ended up winning, um, but we were like ninth. I got a good heat race. I caught the handicap right. Race almost went nonstop. I was able to run top 10, and we finished ninth. I ran there for like another year and a half and couldn't beat 13th. I would get lapped in B-mains at the Wiker weekend, and, I mean, we just struggled and struggled. We couldn't ever figure anything out, and we don't have anything in Western PA that really simulates large, slick half miles like what you would see at Port Royal. So we didn't really have anything to gain or to experience in this area that would help us when we go back out, out east. I mean, it, it was just a struggle bus over and over. And, I mean, we finally started to hit on a couple things in 2018, grabbed the first win, which had a lot of luck involved. And then 2019, we came out of the boat or came out of the gate real quick. And, I mean, we were one of the best cars there every Saturday night. We were always top six. And that really helped give us a lot of confidence. And then we came out this year and just 
couldn't put anything together again, and we were it felt like we were back to rookie season again. Weird, and it's been a weird season, that's for sure. I, I will say this as we go to break. Uh, five wins this season, four at Lernerville. So that Central Pennsylvania knowledge is certainly working for you in the western part of the state. A.J., hang in there with us. Everyone else, stick around more with A.J. Flick in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Nation presented by Sage Fruit rolling along. We are having a wonderful conversation with one of the great young, and I'm going to go young, talents in the sprint car world, A.J. Flick, who joins us. And A.J., your Twitter handle is one of my all-time favorites. It is at Complete Chaos. All right, where did you come up with this? And uh, just, just tell us where that came from. Oh, back from the younger days, the real younger <laughs> days, back when I was uh, 14, 15, 16. Uh, we would come home from high school. I'd be with a bunch of buddies. We'd get on uh, PlayStation or Xbox and just play some video games. And um, one of the games we were playing, obviously, a popular game, Call of Duty. And uh, very first match I was ever in, um, I ended up just watching a buddy. And I said, oh, my God, this is complete chaos. You know, like I didn't have a clue what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. And it was just kind of a, uh, a moment there where he looked at me and just kind of laughed. And he said, add a number two to it, and that'll be your gamer tag. And that's what I used. and. Um, that's been my Twitter handle and stuff before we ever started getting into big cars. So I basically just carried it over. But complete chaos for racing can make some sense too, especially some of the racetracks we run out here in Western PA, Central PA. There's a lot of action that goes on in a little amount of time. <laughs> you are it, right about that. It's so true. And AJ, I love how you put all this together because there's a little story behind your number two as well, isn't there? Yeah. Um, another strange moment for us. We were melting lead to get the street stock ready way back in 2009, 2010, as my dad and I built it from scratch uh, with a bunch of buddies so that we could move up from go-karts. And obviously, when you guys melt the lead, it gets the imperfections and the impurities on top, so you always have to scrape it off. Well, I was scraping it, and I'm 14, 15 years old back then, and I scrape it, and I put a, my name in it. And then, sure enough, my dad's standing there, and the way he's looking at it, it ends up spelling or ends up writing the number two. So he's a graphics design artist by trade, and uh, ended up going, grabbing a piece of paper. Took him about five minutes. He was able to mock up a number two. Um, came over to me, said, this is your number from now on. And I looked at him. I was like, what are you talking about? And I ended up uh, seeing he had a little line through the two. And when you turn it sideways, it ends up spelling AJ. So it's definitely a weird coincidence. I don't think anybody's ever found that before. But we run with it ever since. And anytime we tell a fan, hey, turn your head sideways, you can spell AJ. They always look at it. And it's really funny what their reaction is. That's fantastic. I got to find I got to do that. I got to do that. That's for sure. Um AJ a sprint car racer in 2020 has to be multiple things. You've talked about your hands on with the race car and we've talked about your great driving skills, but also you work with some partners and I follow along on our social media and some of your partners I've seen like uh like um it, just just various partners you have you're always working with them. Your one of your primary partners is Red Robin and they're big up in Pennsylvania. What has it been like to have a partner like that? And my most important question is, what is your favorite item from their <laughs> menu? My favorite all time is a gourmet cheeseburger. And I usually end up getting a second patty on that. And then uh, usually the endless supply of salad, even though the fries are fantastic too. And then I can just down Dr. Pepper all the time. But my girlfriend always goes with the pub mac and cheese and the freckled lemonade. And no matter how many times we go there, the food is just fantastic. And I'm not just saying that because obviously they're partners with me. But I mean, quite frankly, We've ate at Red Robin before we even got the partnership, and uh, that ended up coming about after Greg was killed, um, and they had a uh, Red Robin fundraiser up there at the Lehigh Valley location in Mechanicsburg. So, uh, unfortunately, with the loss of Greg, um, obviously no one wants that to happen, but uh, the silver lining out of it would have been that it did help me form a relationship with some really good people to help honor Greg through the future. I'm just curious. Okay, so we're going to skip away from racing, obviously, yes. because it's – we love to get the real side of, of AJ, the non-racer, what you do off the track. 
And I'm curious because knowing that you're from Western Pennsylvania, obviously I would assume that you're a diehard Steelers fan. Uh But I saw somewhere that you're a Broncos fan. Oh, get out of here with that Steeler stuff. Oh, Whoa. my goodness gracious. I'm very I, disappointed I in you, AJ. <laughs> I can't take it. I mean, just growing up, uh, just, the, just the fan base, it bothered me, just the arrogance and everything. Um, it's nothing against the people. There's a, a lot of fantastic Steeler fans I know, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't get over how people were treated in high school and stuff simply because they didn't like the Steelers, and it kind of pushed me away from the fan base. But... Um, I was a huge Champ Bailey fan ever since he was drafted, and I more or less followed him, and then he had a huge career and tenure out in Denver, and I more or less adopted them. So when they got Peyton Manning in, uh, and we were able to watch them win a Super Bowl after, after they got blown out by Seattle, obviously that was heartbreaking. But uh, nonetheless, we were able to watch them win a Super Bowl, and that was pretty cool because that year itself, Jimmy Johnson won the title. He was my favorite NASCAR driver. I won my first uh, 410 sprint car championship at Larnerville, then where Broncos won the title, and also my Pittsburgh Penguins ended up winning the Stanley Cup too. So that was a pretty cool year for me. So the so and this is fascinating because we've got Ashley the Steelers fan in our ear. We've got Craiger the Steeler hater because he's a Cincinnati Bengal fan. So Craiger is like he's in religious service with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like we're at a revival. So 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 it's the Steelers because you're a Penguins fan on the hockey side, so right? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's. There's probably a lot of people that are calling me a hypocrite because of that, but I understand. I mean, believe it or not, I went to a Steelers game one time to support the Broncos wearing a Penguins cap, and I got some really weird looks that day. (laughs) I I guess so. That is fantastic. (laughs) Well, AJ, we certainly appreciate the time. I know there's just a few races left, and you've had a a solid season, especially in the western part of the state. We wish you the best on those. The best uh, Port Royal is this weekend, so I'm assuming you'll be out there as well. And uh, we appreciate you spending some time joining us here on Wing Nation. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. I just want to give a special thanks to my mother, father, everybody on the crew, my girlfriend for continued support. Uh, fence by maintenance service, grenade construction, Ferguson heating and air conditioning, Red Robin. Like you said, I mean, this racing stuff's impossible. Um, we don't have any big family money behind us. We don't have any massive corporate sponsorships, nothing like that. So um, to have the support I do from friends, family, crew, all these partnerships we've been able to build up, it helps me keep getting back to the races. Well said and well done. Thanks again, man. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. There we go. AJ Fight joining us here. Wow, man, love chatting with him. Love, love talking with him. We'll go to the racetrack and love catching up with him, that's for sure. Hey, we need to step away. Our Tweet Your Seat Tweets of the Week are coming up next. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. We're back, you're watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. It is your time of the week. That's right, it's time to tweet your seats and we're kicking it off with none other than the 58th annual National Open Weekend. So awesome to be there. It was WT, Bill, Kenny, Newman, K-Rob, Derek, Letitia, Winged 410, CJ, and of course myself who tweeted in. Um, David Gravel on Friday night, his 600th career start, his sixth win of the season with the World of Outlaws, and his 57th career with the World of Outlaws win. He is a kid. He is. <laughs> That's exactly right. But we talked about how... Port, or Port, Williams Grove is kind of his home. Being from Connecticut, it was the one place that he could get to on a regular basis to run spring cars. So he's got a lot of laps there. Um, his seventh Williams Grove win, and he was followed by Kyle Larson and Freddie Raymer. He is so good at that racetrack, too. Mm-hmm. He, he is. really, truly is. And then, of course, Saturday, it was Donnie Schatz. We talked about it earlier, his 299th career win. Um, his sixth career National Open win, the most out of that event. Um, he passed gravel, held off a uh, last lap pass, tried to be a pass there from Kyle Larson, and he was $75,000 Richter, followed by Kyle Larson and Logan Schuhart. When you think about the National Open and you think about the Pennsylvania Greats, 
Knights. And you think about guys like Steve Kinzer that have ran it so many times. It's just so danged impressive that Donnie Schatz leads all winners there and just how good he is at that racetrack. He is so good there. And we saw that about halfway through on Friday night. You're like, whoa, I forgot how good he was at this track. I asked him what the secret was, you know, because the place yeah. is a tricky place to run. He said you just have to finish first. first. <laughs> there you go. Genius ring, that's right? for sure. Yeah. Uh, also on the Williams Grove front, congratulations to Freddie Raymer, his second track championship there. So I'm sure Fred and everyone really happy with that. The other big event this past weekend it was I-30 Speedway in Little Rock, Arkansas. Tweets from Dissum and Casey, uh, the tweets on this one. Uh, 33rd annual Comp Cams Short Track Nationals. 78 cars logged into this one. Friday night, Derek Hagar. I love this top three. Derek Hagar, a local from Arkansas, Mark Smith from Pennsylvania, and Dylan Westbrook from Canada. This thing draws them from all over the place and all over the globe. Saturday night was the big night, $10,041 to win. And for the first time in his career, Sam Hafertip Jr. picked up the win. Ashley, he had won three preliminary nights in the past. He had also been second three times. In the you can't keep a good man down theme, <laughs> Sam Hafferty finally got it done on the big night. I would have never guessed that he had not won I agree. The, <laughs> the show. Well, and he overcame Friday night. Okay, he wadded up a car. Oh, they gosh. had to rebuild a car. Uh -huh. Saturday, first lap in the heat race, someone ran over the front of him. He went to the back of the heat race, <laughs> and he became a man possessed. <laughs> At that point, Sam Hafferty was going to win it. Derek Hagar and Roger Crockett on the podium. Next week comes from Jaden. It is Clinton yes. County Speedway. A great little dirt track in Mill Hall, PA, near Williamsport. Um, they race 305s. Your champion was Garrett Bard, and they also run 600 and 270 micro sprints. We were just sitting here talking about it. We both have great memories from Clinton County. I used to drive down with a guy named George Supra, who raced there and won some championships, and come to find out that... Well, he, 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 <laughs> my uh, dad may have finished second in one of those championships, <laughs> but uh, great little place. I spent so much time there growing up as a kid. Uh, Clinton County Speedway, Fairgrounds Racetrack as well. Um, Jason McCacken, somebody that we used to race with back in the day. He yeah. was a promoter then. He kind of went to the wayside, but he came back this year and brought back the track in Love 2020. It. So really great. Love. Tip of the cap to Clinton it, yes. County Speedway. Absolutely. Hey, have you ever heard of the FPS 410 Sprint Car Engine? Well, if you haven't, you will. It's the result of a collaborative Collaboration between Ford Performance, Tony Stewart Racing, and Durham Racing Engines. Tony Stewart used it in his team sprint car for the first time in mid-August last year. Two weeks later, TRS scored its first 410 equipped victory with the legendary Donnie Schatz behind the wheel. And Saturday night, Donnie Schatz scored the biggest sprint car win of 2020 in the National Open in that Ford-powered sprint car. So, what's an FPS 410's future? The goal is an engine that can challenge for victories in series across the country as part of a Ford Performance customer program. Now that sounds like a winner. Hey Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. There are people who say things aren't made here anymore. Those people should make a trip to Michigan or Kentucky or Illinois, where you'll find our workers and dealers and engineers and technicians building for America. We're proud to employ more hourly workers than any other automaker in this country because we build for this country. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. We're in the Hercules Star Studios and the season is winding down. Uh, what, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sad because it's winding down, but if it can get us out of 2020 and right? out of 2021, I'm happy. I don't ever want to wish time away, but. Yeah, this year needs to <laughs> be yep. gone. That's for sure. Uh, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour wrapping up their season next weekend. They're at Devil's Bowl. Uh, for the season championship, Sam Hafertip Jr., we just mentioned him, likely to be the champion. He is the point leader. Ashley, they scheduled 50 races. 
These are races 16 and 17 for the mm. national tour. Boy, if that doesn't stay 2020. <laughs> but as we wind down the championships and everything, it's been, uh, the, the racing's been phenomenal, just not enough of it. Yes, That precisely. is for sure. So, hey, we appreciate complete chaos. <laughs> AJ Flick for joining us here on the program. But more important than all of that, we appreciate you. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit.